This is magnificent. Wow. Way up at the tip top of Alaska, an airplane can feel like a time machine. You see them there? There's a bunch of little babies running around. Because the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, commonly known as ANWR, is the kind of pure wilderness most of America paved over long ago. Oh, this is it. We are in the heart of the Arctic Refuge. Welcome to one of the last truly wild places on Earth. The coastal plain brims with life, from musk oxen to bears, both grizzly and polar. Birds that will migrate to the backyards of all 50 states. But as Florian Schulz has captured over the years, the most common creature is the caribou. And not just a few, but hundreds of thousands. The kind of herd unseen since the plains buffalo were wiped away. And when Florian is here with his family, he can't help but wonder how long it will last. We need to keep some of these places untouched. We are changing the world everywhere so fast, but why not leave a few places unspoiled? For almost 60 years, that was the rationale that protected Anwar from this. These are the oil fields of Prudhoe Bay that fill the famous pipeline and power countless lives. But since there are billions of barrels elsewhere, nature lovers have long argued there is no need to drill here. And for decades, that argument held, until... One day, a friend of mine who's in the oil business called, is it true that you have Anwar in the bill? I said, I don't know, who cares? What is that? He said, well, you know, Reagan tried. Every single president tried. I said, you gotta be kidding, I love it now. And after that, we fought like hell to get Anwar. He talked me into it. December's tax cut bill also opened Anwar to drilling, thanks to Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski, who slipped in the provision, knowing that it would only need 51 instead of 60 votes to pass. It is wrong for those from the outside looking in who have taken a nice trip into an area and said, this must be protected. But conservationists point out there is already a huge glut of American oil. And oil companies are laying people off up here, right? Because prices are so low. Oil companies have been laying people off. And, you know, for the first time in the last five years, I was seeing more oil company workers leaving the state of Alaska and going to places like North Dakota yeah. than, than coming into the state. But much like Trump's efforts to revive dying coal mines, the rush to drill here seems driven more by politics than economics. Former Speaker of the House Tom DeLay once said, if we could drill in Anwar, it'll break the back of the environmental lobby. Yeah, that's how... Did that come true? Did, 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 did that happen? Well, they haven't, they haven't drilled in Anwar yet. We know that the Arctic regions are heating twice as fast as any other part of the world, and it just makes zero sense to come here and look for more oil that's just going to exacerbate that problem. And among those opposed is the Gwich'in Nation, the northernmost tribe of Native Americans. How many people live here? About 150 around. Wow. I think about 150 people live on my floor of my apartment building. <laughs> Their numbers may be tiny, but they are definitely not outsiders. Archaeological evidence shows we've been here over 25,000 years. And the only reason they survived is caribou. Back in the day, they would trap the animals in these handmade corrals. These days, they use guns and snowmobiles, but still need the animals to survive in one of the most expensive neighborhoods in America. Groceries at the Midnight Sun can cost twice as much as the Whole Foods in Manhattan. Gasoline up here runs $10 a gallon. But still, given the choice between oil money and caribou, there is no debate. These folks will stick with the one animal that has kept them alive for thousands of years. And they cannot imagine drills and trucks and pipelines across what they call the sacred place where life begins. Look what happened to the Plains Indians and the buffalo. Yeah. That's not gonna happen to my people. We're not gonna allow that to happen again. To the Gwich'in, they are a Native American David against a Goliath of oil companies, Republican lawmakers, and the Inupiaq coastal tribe of native Alaskans, eager to drill and cash in. Now that the U.S. is saying we can finally do this, now we have the other side. The environmentalists saying we can't do this. 
What's wrong with this picture? Up on the edge of the Beaufort Sea, the little hamlet of Kaktovik is the only village inside Anwar. And there are three topics of conversation most days. Polar bears, the weather, and Donald Trump. Are you a fan of President Trump? Yeah, he, he does good things. You know, he does bad things. I'm grateful that he got the bill passed. Like the president, Charles Lamp thinks drilling in Anwar would be a good thing. And like the president, he's unfazed by the shocking rise in Arctic temperature. The climate is changing up here. Yeah, the climate's always changing. It, it has always changed. But you don't believe that has uh, anything to do with fossil fuels? Uh, it probably has, yeah. It's, yeah. it's got to do with... Do you believe in climate change? Do you think it exists? Uh, uh, there is a cooling and there's a heating. The ice caps were going to melt. They were going to be gone by now, but now they're setting records. That is the exact opposite of the truth. And this time lapse of NASA satellite data clearly shows how the relentless burning of fossil fuels is melting the Arctic at a record pace, including the oldest, thickest ice seen here in white. Which is why more and more emaciated Nanook are wandering into town. They need sea ice to make dens and hunt seals, and without it, whale scraps are the next best thing. But skinny, hungry polar bears aren't the only warning sign up here. That is the Kaktovik airport, and they're moving it away from the coast, due in part to sea level rise. They're seeing more and more freakish rainstorms in the winter and blizzards in the summer, but at the same time, all the modern creature comforts in this town, from the clinic to the school, were paid for with oil money. And with the promise of fresh millions for their native corporation, most of the folks here are eager to tap into the one product that is changing their land forever. What we use for whaling, we use gas and oil. What we use to go hunt caribou, we use gas and oil. We have this right to develop on our own land. A so-called scoping meeting with federal officials lays bare just how emotionally divisive the issue has become. Think about what's going to happen to this land if there's an oil spill and the response that's going to come along with it. We have thousands of gallons discovered in places that have already seen disruption, but restraint is what we lack. When did we all become owners of the land? It has always owned us. Thank you for that message. Can we ask where you were from? That loaded question and the tension in the room shows how much resentment there is for outsiders who want to protect the refuge. Human rights violations, genocide. A lot of folks don't know, don't know our history. Are we going to be used as pawns in the future or are we going to stand up for our people? The Inupiaq have gotten a raw deal since the first U.S. troops arrived here after World War II, moved their village, dumped toxic waste, and even submitted their people to bizarre medical experiments. When Alaska discovered oil in the 70s, they were among the tribes who signed over their land in exchange for shares in native corporations. While across the refuge and in the mountains, the Gwich'in refused to embrace the white man's profit motive. They held on to their land and their way of life. The only assets that they had was the land. So they partnered with who they could, like on the North Slope, their land, oil. So they partnered with the oil companies. We've told them our position, like our culture, our spirituality, our traditional way of life is based on the caribou and we're not willing to give it up. I'd say that they have the moral high ground. They're trying to pr preserve their culture and the people that are pro-oil are doing it for money. Back in Kaktovik, Robert Thompson is known as the local anti-drilling gadfly, a wildlife guide who carries a revolver just in case that skinny polar bear gets grouchy. This gun is more powerful than Dirty Harry's gun. Is that right? <laughs> he points out that the native-owned Arctic Slope Regional Corporation is worth billions thanks to royalties from other drilling sites. But that wealth does not trickle down. And when there is an improvement, the costs are enormous. The water and sewer project here cost uh, about a million dollars per household. So, so there's corruption here and people want to keep that money flowing. You know, it's going to the leaders of these corporations. Uh, regional corporation board members get average income of a million dollars per person. So they want to keep it. There are a lot of people in Chicago or Dallas or Iowa mm -hmm. who believe this is their land too. 
it is a national wildlife refuge, like a national park. Yeah, but they And will, they want to keep it pure, but... They will never set foot here. I don't think it's right for them to be able to tell us what we can and cannot do with our own land. You know, we're the best stewards of our land. That is the kind of local support pro-drilling lawmakers like Lisa Murkowski love to highlight. I have listened to colleagues say that we are destroying the refuge, that this, we will turn this into an industrial wasteland. I am offended, I am horrified, and it is wrong. Despite our numerous requests, she refused to be interviewed. And one reason may be that unlike the president, she is one Republican who believes in man-made climate change, but wants her state to keep drilling regardless. If this will happen here, it would just destroy the entire, the entire place. Meanwhile, Florian hopes everyone, including the good people of Kaktovik, will just take the long view. I'm using resources, I, I'm driving a car, but I feel we need to think in new ways. We need mm -hmm. to think in new technologies and stay with the value of keeping wild landscapes because once they're gone, they're gone. Bill Weir. CNN, Kaktovik, Alaska.